everybody, it's Jeff. This video, I'm gonna go over my 3D printed canopy, which is also my FPV system and camera mount. Let's take a look, shall we? Alrighty, so here it is. Um, I really love this hatch, and I've been using it for a while. I have a couple of dolphins, or <laughs> I had a couple of dolphins, and instead of having separate and buying pretty much just another air unit for it, I like this hatch because I could transfer this hatch from one air unit and or from one dolphin and put it on the next. Uh, this just works out really good. You can print this whole setup in one day, um, and I print all of this with eSun PLA Plus. The only thing that I use is this um, TPU right here for the VTX holder. So let's go and take this thing off the plane, and I'll show you kind of how this is set up. So when we open up the hatch here, and as you can see, I mount my, this is loosely sitting there, my battery on this twin sits back here. Um, so we'll open this up, and as you can see too, it's got magnets. This is the underside of it, the servo. This goes into, this is actually a Menace RC switch. I use this switch to turn my VTX on and off. And how I do that, Let's grab my radio. What I do is I use my slider right here. So when I slide this up, you'll see the VTX turn on. When I slide it down, the VTX is off. This is nice while you're waiting for GPS signal and everything, keeps the air unit from cooking or just working on it in general. Uh, I used to have a little switch mounted off to the side and it just, this plane lands rough sometimes. It just be kind of came a little problematic for me. Um, I still love using the switch. Um, I use that on my uh, swordfish right here. This right here uh, controls my VTX for that. And again, I print this whole thing in PLA Plus. It's four P. It's five pieces: the front hatch, the rear hatch, the camera holder, and the VTX and antenna holder. Um, there's also, you can add another little hatch lock to it if you'd like. And what makes this nice is when I pull this thing up, you can see all my leads are right there. So to take this from one plane to the next, I just unplug everything, boom, it goes to the next plane. The other thing is it kind of gives this thing a little bit of structural support. So I'm finishing up right now printing the VTX tray. But I do have a couple of pieces over here, and I'll also show you how I set this thing up um, in Cura for printing it. I'm printing on, this is a Creality Ender uh, Neo, I don't remember, I'll post it up. This thing works good, if you've got a bamboo, I mean obviously those things are top of the line. But I really do love this. Um, the servo, and I'll, and I'll share too with the servo that I use. These servos allow me to, I mean, I'm pointing in the direction, sorry, that's super zoomed in, of the camera. So I can get a full look back. Um, and it just works great. Of course, all my videos you see on my channel are shot with this. And I also have another version of this um, that has a hood scoop, which is this one right here. I just have the supports on it. So let me go ahead and I'll unplug this from the plane. We'll power the plane off and I'll show you all the pieces. And here it is. So the first thing everyone's going to ask is, Jeff, how much does this weigh? Well, this thing weighs with everything 100. I'll slide that up. 160 grams. How much does the regular hatch weigh? 15. So it does weigh more. And I know everyone's going to post up in the comments, you can use lightweight PLA. You can. You can use whatever the heck you want. I like using this eSun. It's pretty good. It's pretty durable. Um, I have parts in my car with this, and I've never had anything melt or warp or anything like that. I've had this hatch fly off. It's been pretty resilient. So the way that I assemble this is I just use super glue, and I glue these two halves together. So they just glue together with super glue, a permanent bond. But the VTX on top here, this is just hot glued. And the reason I hot glue it is if you land goofy and you bust off your antenna, instead of having to print this whole thing, 
you can just reprint this. This takes an hour to print. Both of these take about four hours, four and a half. And we'll dive into, I'll show you what I have it set up as Cura my settings. I print both these pieces 5% infill. Um, no supports for this one, no brim, and they come out great. This is my other version. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the support off because as you can see, this has got an air intake. So this would be nice for those of you that have your battery that um, you put your battery in the normal position, not in the back like me. This will give you some pretty good airflow. Now you're gonna notice there's a little hole right here on the side. That's because all of this stuff I have gathered from other people and modified to make work for me. I, I left a little bit of hole right there just to let stuff breathe, but I covered most of this up because in my plane, I'm gonna take the camera off here, because in my plane, I like to record audio, and I record the audio from right there. And I'm trying to keep the wind down um, as much as I can so it doesn't sound blown out. And that's why I pretty much have no holes or ventilation in the front of this. But that's also because my battery is in the back. And as you guys have seen in my video, I run this scoop on the back, and that blows right down on the battery. Of course, I don't use that battery. I just have it here right now to demonstrate. And that's it on that. So let's mount this sucker back up. So depending on what, 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 what version you want to use, if you want to use this one, um, the front's going to be the same for all, but I have this back, or we have a regular back that's just smooth. So however you want to do it. Now, it does use magnets, but it uses these stronger magnets. Uh, you can see here on the end, this little, that's two of them, that, these little thin guys, these are the stock Atom RC magnets. These bigger ones are the one off Amazon, and they work a thousand times better. And these magnets, these bigger ones, they press right into here. You just press them in, and they'll stay. What I do is, get that off of there. What I do is I, I put a stack like this, and then I'll set them on my table, and then I'll just ugh, push down. Presses right in, no super glue needed. I've also thrown these in the freezer and pushed them in because uh, the freezer, you know, just shrinks stuff, gets colder. That works as, that works well too. The next thing is the servo. So I designed it for this servo right here, and I'll have links for all this in the description. This is a 270 degrees servo. These things are freaking cheap. I think they're like seven bucks. Um, there's a place down in Texas that I order these from, and uh, uh, usually get them in like four or five days if I need them. Now these have a fourth wire. This is like a feedback wire. Um, so for like a robotics thing, I don't use feedback obviously. So I end up just snipping that little guy off right there and just use it as a regular uh, servo. The nice thing about this, these this will feed down into there. And then this is just a press fit into this cavity right here. Boom, no glue, no nothing, and it's in there solid. So if you damage something, you just take it, pop it out, Bob is your uncle. Now the plate is printing right now, and that's what this square is for. It lines up on top of this. So that way you can feed your wire through. The wire comes out from underneath and then plugs into the back of your VTX. And of course your antenna slides into here. And dude, this is it. A side note, this is the VTX piece. And I didn't really show this in the video, so I'm showing it now after the fact. This right here, the, um, the VTX holder, it sits on here, and then what I use is just a couple of screws, any screw that you can find that'll work, and I just screw it down into the uh, front two holes, and that just holds it down in the front, and that's it. I don't use all four, I just use two, and that works great. But I wanted to show you this piece without anything on it. Um, this mounting pattern is actually the walk snail pattern, believe it or not, um, and then this fits the DJI, and it's got a dual mounting 
uh, hole on it, one for the DJI and one for the Walk Snell. Um, I've been using this forever. And of course, this will all be linked up in the description. But again, it just sits on there like that. Take yourself a couple of screws, screw it into there, and it's all one piece. And then this again gets glued onto the canopy. Thumbs up. Um, it works great. It's a long print, but um, once you get it printed, everything's good. And you can print it, oops, and you can print this in a day. I mean, you got started in the morning and you're finishing at night, but you can get this done in a day. The reason I have this printing right now is so I have another swordfish on the way, and I plan on doing a conventional rear pusher single motor um, swordfish, so I'm going to use this for that. And then again, you just take your super glue, super glue it, and you're done. Uh, so now we'll head over to the computer, and I'll show you how I have everything set up and how everything prints. Another thing, what you're going to need is you're going to need probably a bolt kit. These servos, they don't use M2 or M3, they use M2.5. So I bought this kit, of course there will be a link down in the description, I bought it just for these servos. Alrighty, so we're here on the computer. Uh, this is the front canopy. This is where uh, the servo goes in. And how I print this is I set my infill to 5%. I use triangles no supports, and I just use a skirt for build plate adhesion. And on my Ender 3 S1 Pro, we're looking at five hours and 26 minutes to print that, and it prints great. This is the rear canopy. This is the standard rear canopy, and I print it the exact same way, 5% infill. No supports, I just use a skirt. Four hours and 50 minutes. And it prints perfect. Now, this is the rear canopy that has the air intake. And as you saw in the beginning, I do use supports. Again, the infill is set to 5%. Slice away. Now here's the other thing you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to come back in here and you're gonna wanna probably use a support blocker. Reason you're gonna wanna use a support blocker and you can just let the thing print, but you're looking at almost eight hours. If you come in here and use your support blocker and you put it there and there, 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 Let's try that again now. And we missed a spot. That already took it down two hours. Let's go ahead and add another support blocker. Looks like we missed just a coon's hair right there. Slice. There we go. Five hours. Preview. There we go. And then it's just going to use the support right there in the front. And again, no brim. Uh, nice thing about the brim is when you're trimming the brim, everything's just nice. I'm sorry, excuse me. Nice thing about the skirt is that you don't have to trim the brim off. Moving on, the VTX. This I would print 100%. No supports. This takes an hour and 13 minutes. Last but not least, this is the camera holder. It's already set up to go over everything. Slice to go over the servo, 47 minutes. Money in the bank, tell me what you think. So that's it, y'all. Finished product, looks great. It's easy to assemble. It looks good, like it looks decent. And uh, keeps everything protected. I mean, that's kind of the reason why I like having my camera up here. I've had my camera all the way in the nose. I've had my camera right here. Um, I've, out of all my setups, I like this the best. 
I like to see a little bit of my nose. I like the fact that, again, if I want to go to my other dolphin, I can take this off, stick that in my dolphin. It's just really nice. Um, nothing else to say other than, remember, someone else designed all of this stuff. I have just modified, reverse engineered, whatever you want to call it. And for those of you that put your battery in here and you want some cooling, I have the cooling option. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you got some airflow going in. Piece of cake. Uh, the other thing is too, don't forget, if you do this, you're gonna need those bigger magnets. And I'll have a link for that down in the description. You'll, use, you'll get them in a big old tub like this. Uh, works great. They're actually the exact same diameter as the factory magnets. They're just uh, like the ones you that come with it. They're just way thicker and a stronger magnet altogether. So that wraps it up, y'all. Till the next video, see ya.